Ever since the Nether update, I've wondered if it's possible to survive in the Nether just like you do in the overworld. So today, that's what we're going to find out. I'm going to build a fully functional Nether base, complete with a respawn room with an emergency armor equipper, a source of food using hoglins, and a whole bunch more. Also, hi! Welcome back to the Let's Play. How are you doing? I hope you're doing good. I'm doing good. Actually, I'm doing great. You know why? Because the other day, we had another successful live stream. And it was a little bit less chaotic than our first one. And we actually got some stuff done. Maybe you've already seen it as I've been walking away from it. That's right. We gave the member shrine a makeover. I'm still a little iffy on the roof. It looks a little bit chunky in places that it shouldn't be. But I like how it stands out so much more, especially now that we've got those spruce trees dotted around. I want to add a lot more spruce trees around this mountain and kind of make it a foresty area. And the shrine, I think, would just be dwarfed by that. So adding a little bit more height and width to the shrine will really help it stand out on the horizon. At least that's my thoughts. You can tell me if you hate it. <laughs> I, I'll understand. Let me know if, if you like it or if we should blow it up with some TNT. Also, I'm having a ton of fun live streaming this world and I will definitely be doing it more in the future. So if you don't want to miss a live stream, make sure you're subscribed and make sure you hit the little bell notification by the subscription icon just so that you get notified whenever I go live. Isn't that right, horse horse? Speaking of blowing things up with TNT, last episode we confiscated... Well... We had taken some TNT that was shipped to Gil, but it's not in the chest anymore. Oh, Gil, you wouldn't happen to know about this, would you? Gil? Oh, no. <laughs> Has he gotten out and taken the TNT? Woofus, have you seen anything? I swear, if he does something with that TNT. Horse Horse, have you seen Gil recently? What about you, Rufus? You see anything suspicious recently regarding an axolotl and some TNT? Welp, I got some bad news, everyone. I just poked around our entire base, and there's not a single sign of Gil. So I guess that means we're just gonna have to wait till he pops up with whatever he's planning. But we're already getting sidetracked. I gotta get this episode started. I'm an armor stand. Hi. Oh, I think I just punched myself. <laughs> Before we get started on the nether base, I have 50 levels, so we're gonna see if we can get some more enchantments on our super mega ultra awesome dragon slaying armor, which is currently not looking super hot. The helmet and the chest plate look okay, but <laughs> I need some better enchantments on the pants and the boots. What the heck? I did not know they do that. <laughs> they just jump around? Oh, is it because I have knockback on my sword? Yeah, it is. <laughs> That's funny. Well, 40-ish levels later, this is what we got. We got a, basically a completely decked out helmet, which actually I'm going to be taking for a little bit because we're going to need it on our next adventure. We've got protection for an unbreaking on the chest plate, protection for an unbreaking on the legs, and the booties, we got protection three, depth strider three, and unbreaking three. I need protection four and feather falling on those things. And then I think this will be a, a good bit of dragon slaying armor. It's not the best armor in the game, but I think it'll do us good. I also just spent a few minutes creating this, the soup ladle. All our shovels have been fortune shovels so far, and I need a silk touch one for what we're doing next. I needed to do a little bit of resource gathering before we could start building. And the reason I grabbed that respiration helmet and made a shovel with silk touch on it was because we were heading out to the ocean. You see, underneath the waves is a nearly limitless supply of gravel, which we need for concrete. The other ingredient, sand, just happens to be in abundance along the beaches next to the ocean. So I filled my inventory with both and headed home to craft up a whole bunch of white concrete. And after repairing Cave Crusher, I turned all the powder into solid concrete because you can't water it down in the nether. All right, I've gathered up a whole bunch of materials because I'm so ready to get building. There's only one slight problem. Oh, here, let me just show you. Our nether portal is currently on the side of a cliff, which I guess would be fine if we were goats, but we're not goats, are we? Actually, what are we? What are... Are Minecraft characters considered like humans or are they actually like a type of mob in the world? That's some food for your brain today. I guess it would make sense if we were like a type of inhuman mob because of how much stuff we can carry on our person at once. That's weird. I've never considered like Steve to be anything other than a person, but I guess he might be. Don't mind me. I'm just coming back to grab my hat because I'm scared to go in the nether without it. Anyway, I'm not exactly sure how nether portal stuff works, but I'd love to get this portal from up there 
to down there on some solid ground. So I'm going to try and do that. Okay, I have no clue if this is going to work or not. Let's find out. If we light this up, it should take us straight through to... Drum roll, please. This portal. Perfect. Okay, now what if we go back through it? Do I have to... I might have to deactivate the other one. <laughs> Oops. Yep. Okay, wait. Okay, if we break this one... Oh, that was violent. <laughs> if we break that one and then go back down and try the other one... Okay, yep, we go through this side. Okay, please tell me this works and doesn't just hook up the old one. Let's go! Okay, that was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Perfect. Okay, now our portal is more on, like, ground level so we can actually build around it. Okay, let's start building out a room around this thing and hopefully not get completely destroyed by a guest. I think for now I'm going to use these smooth stone slabs for the flooring because I think they'll look really good with the white walls. And with the floor in place, let's add said walls. Let's finish them off with a stripe of gray concrete. And then white again for the roof. As the build came together, I also ended up adding a stripe of gray concrete along the bottom. I also added this one to the side of the building because I had this cool idea where if we build other nether portals to other structures in our world, we could build other bases like this around them. And this is the first base. Okay, so I got a little bit carried away and built the rest of the interior of this room, but it's still lacking some details. So let's take a second and go through and add some stuff around. This room is like kind of based off my memories of Stranger Things a little bit. It's been a while since I've seen that show, but I remember there being some sort of lab with like a big old like observation deck and then the portal across from it. So that's kind of what I was trying to mimic here. I think it really works. I like this kind of like elevated walkway across to the portal. And yeah, we've got like a control room in here. And of course, every control room needs some sort of like control panel. So I'm thinking I might use these. And then if you add buttons on the front, it kind of helps hide the like smoker bit of it. And then of course you can just add levers on top. <laughs> and that kind of looks like some sort of control thing. <laughs> I don't know. What do you guys think? I think from over here coming out of the portal, it looks pretty good. But then what do we do on these side walls here? Well. I think we need some sort of like hazmat suit or something in here. I think that would be kind of cool. So let's put that over on this side. And then on this side, I don't know if you know this, but compasses in the nether, they kind of just like randomly point to whatever, I think. And it makes really great spinning dials. So I think, what if we just put like a row of them there? Like they're like calculating something. I don't know. We're watching the power levels of the nether portal or something like that. That's kind of mesmerizing. I like that. <laughs> It still seems a little blank in here, but I'm not sure. I might need your guys' help to figure out what else we can put in here to make it seem complete. And also the interior in this part could kind of use some work. We got the backwards letters over there. I might just leave that wall blank for now. But over here, I was thinking, what if we made some sort of like power tube or something? I'm not sure exactly, but let me give this a go. Okay, that looks kind of neat. It's completely pointless, but I like it. I just had a thought. What if we put lava in there? Ooh, it really lights the place up too. That's kind of neat. And now it looks like it's kind of flowing through a tube on the side of the wall. I like that a lot, actually. I wonder if I should do the same thing on this side or just leave the numbers. I might just leave the numbers for now. That definitely gives some more visual interest to the room. Okay, I'm going to say our first room in the nether base is complete. I think we could definitely add a few more details here and there based on your guys' suggestion, but I'm pretty happy with this so far. And it's time to get started on the other parts of the lab, like the respawn room and the food room, which are both going to be down these two separate hallways, but I haven't started on the rooms yet. So let me build those up real quick. Okay, I built two more rooms, but they are very, very blank right now. Actually, it kind of looks like the inside of like an insane asylum. Oh man, I kind of feel like I'm going insane building this with all the pig noises around me. <laughs> the nether has so much like ambient noise going on. I really wish they would add more to the overworld actually. We could really use some like birds chirping in the forests and I don't know, like things in the rivers. 
Stuff like that. What do you think? Yeah, you've never been to the overworld, have you? <laughs> Maybe one day. <laughs> anyway, yeah, these two extra rooms are done, and I think we're going to start by building the respawn room. I want to put a little platform to respawn on, an armory equipper, a chest for, like, keeping food and stuff, and then I think I'm going to make kind of like an airlock door over here so that you can get easy access in and out of the nether. Because we're protected right now, but if we hit one of those pigmen, or if a gas shows up, things are not going to look so great out there. So I want to have easy access into and out of our base. And I guess you can just chill here too. All right, let's see if I'm smart enough to actually make this work. So there's those. We need more right here. And then we need that there. And that activates all the bottom ones, I think. But now we got to hook up some redstone. We'll just dig out the back here. <laughs> okay, I'm actually going to follow this tutorial I found by Narconax on YouTube. He seems to know what he's doing, and I do not. So it looks like we'll need repeaters here, and then some redstone hooking around. Then I think we have to go under here, under these. And then we gotta bring redstone all the way out to here where we have a observer. And then we just put redstone here. I think that's right. I guess there's one way to find out. Well, let's add a piece of armor to each of these. And then for my other two, I'm actually gonna put a sword and a shield. Okay, then let's take all this off. Get everything out of our hotbar. And let's see if this works. Ready? Oh. Okay, it didn't work. <laughs> Alright, I think I just figured out my very dumb mistake. Let's try this now. Three, two, one. Let's go! Oh, it even equips the shield into the right hand. Oh, that's perfect. I'm all decked out in gold armor. Yes, I, di I did gold because really this is only for like if we die somewhere and we need to run and grab our loot. So hopefully we'd be able to get back to our loot in time to grab, you know, the actual set of armor. And all gold helps protect us from the pigmen. <laughs> anyway, what I had wrong was I basically just built the whole thing one layer lower than I was supposed to be. And also I needed redstone under here for the d observer to detect. So if you want to build something like this, please go check out his tutorial. It's short and sweet and it gets the job done. Now the design is not very flattering, so I think we can spruce it up by surrounding it in some of this gray concrete. I think that looks a little better. What if we extend this to the ceiling so it looks like there's some sort of tube coming out? Yeah, I think that'll work. I'm actually going to build a similar chamber over right here because this is where I'm going to put our food and maybe a bow and arrow. Oops, this one's too high. I think I'm just going to keep this one super simple. I'm just going to put a chest on a platform here, and I guess this block above it probably has to go. There we go. And then let's just put some food and a bow and some arrows. There we go. Now we got a full loadout between these two machines here. Now we need the actual respawning part of the respawn room. So I'm going to build a platform in the center here out of deep slate. And in the middle here, this is where I would put my respawn anchor if I had one. <laughs> However, I don't have any crying obsidian, which you need to make it. I do, however, have a whole bunch of gold. So I'm going to go try and trade with some piglins, actually, and see if I can't get some. Hello, anyone want some gold? There's two of them. Hey, people. Or pigs, I guess. <laughs> want some gold? I don't use this mechanic enough. Crying obsidian, please? Uh, nope, just some blackstone. Here, let's try again. I have no clue what the chances of them giving us crying obsidian are. Maybe this is a waste of time. Gravel? <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, there it is. Who's cutting onions? I got two crying obsidian. Now I just need, what, four more? Oh my gosh. No. No way. Did you? I swear, if you went in here and stepped on my armor equipper, you did. No, <laughs> I can't let that slide. I'm sorry, dude. Okay, this sucks, and I'm sorry to have to do this, but <laughs> that's my armor. Oh my gosh. I can't believe that. That's going to be a problem I didn't think about. Maybe I should have like a fence gate or something there. Obviously, I need to pig-proof the design. Anyway, I managed to get five crying obsidian but i'm out of a stack of gold so i need to get one more somehow i also got a soul speed three book which is nice i might have been out of gold but i knew where i could find one more crying obsidian free of charge there it is man i passed this thing a couple of times now on my way out to the desert and never once did i think that i would be coming back to grab this from it there we go that's all we needed <laughs> all right let's head back home horse horse 
It is nice to be out here with all the green grass and blue skies and everything. You really don't get that in the nether. <laughs> My sheep pen's kind of looking like the condiment section at a fast food restaurant. We got mustard and ketchup and mayo. All right, back through to the other side. Oh, yeah, I made some improvements in here, by the way. It's still not done, but I like this a little bit better. Let's grab some glowstone, craft our respawn anchor, and stick it down right on our platform. Perfect. Now, I think it's glowstone blocks you need, right? Yep. There we go. Look at that. We're basically invincible now. <laughs> Just try me. I dare you. Just kidding. I do not want to start a riot in my base. Okay, there's one more thing this room needs, and that is an actual entrance and exit because I just keep pickaxing through the walls here to get out, and that's not the optimal strategy. Speaking of which, let's replace that nether rack with some actual concrete. Okay, it isn't a 3x3 piston door, but <laughs> I think it works for now. Maybe that's something we can upgrade in the future. I also added some lights along the ceiling just because I don't want to use torches everywhere. They don't really go with the futuristic look. <laughs> and I added these tables here. We can maybe display some things from our nether adventures on them. I think it just fills out the space a little bit nicer. But I think this room is just about done. Oh yeah, I added a fence gate here just because these freaking guys just keep going and activating the armor. Anyway, we can run across the hallway now over to our piglin harvesting room, which is currently just still part of an insane asylum. Now this one's going to be a little bit trickier because I don't know if you've noticed, but there aren't exactly any hoglins around here. So we're going to have to go hunt them down. But first we got to build a pen for them. So we're ready. I think I'm just going to come across this whole side just like this with gray concrete. Then this is all going to be that red nether stuff, the warped nether. I don't even know what it's called, but you, you know what I mean. <laughs> and then I think if we cover this in glass panels, I think I should be able to get to them without them being able to get to me. Maybe the babies can get through, in which case we can just put some trap doors down on these, I think. Man, poor Cave Crusher is really going through it. I think this is the second repair of this episode. We're already up to costing nine. <laughs> But that pickaxe repair was necessary in order to build this little baby right here. Also, please try to ignore the pig sounds outside. I accidentally hit one that was in the base, and now they will not stop. But what is this little machine, you ask? Well, I'm calling it the Hoglin Cooker 9000. Patent pending. Allow me to demonstrate. So, imagine this thing is full of hoglins that we breeded up, and we need some meat. Well, let's just say we come through with our sword and chop a few down. The meat's sitting here. I know this is mutton, just ignore it. <laughs> Maybe it was a, a sheepish hoglin. Anyway, all you gotta do is press this little button here. And if everything works, it should in one short moment. One short moment, I said. Okay, maybe two short moments. <laughs> okay. Uh. Oh, there was a button in the in the in the furnace. Oops. Yes, in one short moment or a couple short moments, I guess, this thing will produce some mutton for us. Or actually, it's it's gonna be pork. It's gonna. I can't think with these freaking guys outside. Would you please shut up? <laughs> Look at them all. Hey, you can't get in here. Na 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 na. Anyway, yes, that's that's my invention. And if you want to know how it works, well, it's not really that hard. It's basically just a minecart that you press a button, it powers, goes around here, it's got a hopper in it, it comes down here, picks up all of the loot, comes back around, goes up the track, and then deposits it into the, uh, what you, uh, the pig sounds, oh my gosh, the smoker. <laughs> it, it puts it in the smoker, and there you go. That's, that's how it's done. Also, please disregard the fact that I built it one block over from where it was supposed to be. It's in the right spot now. Or maybe you didn't even notice that it was in the wrong spot. And by opening my big mouth, I just yapped on myself. Maybe I just played myself. Who knows? Anyway, it's in the right spot. That's all that matters. And it's got a little light that blinks when you turn it on. Look at that. But soup soup, I hear you saying, how are we going to feed the hoglins? Oh, torch. In order to breed them. Well, that's what this machine behind me is for. I'm calling this one the Hoglin Breedinator 9000, patent pending. All you gotta do is just flick this lever and you get a little bit of fungus or whatever. What is it actually called? Yeah, crimson fungus. There we go. And then you just take all this out and then you flick the lever again and you get a little bit more fungus. There you go. Infinitely repeatable. And if you wanna know how this one works, well, let's go through this door. You just follow this hallway right around here, and it's basically just a bunch of dispensers with bone meal pointed up into the nether, uh, whatever you call it, crimson nether stuff. And then they're all redstoned up to observers that look into each other and send off a pulse every few seconds. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> 
It's basically the same thing as my magic haystack in my barn, if you've seen that. But now we've got all the infrastructure in place, so it's time to go hoglin hunting. Here we see the wild hoglin in their natural habitat. He's on the hunt for his next bit of prey, but we have different plans for him. Sorry, that accent is terrible. Hey, buddy. Want to chase me, please? Yes. Okay, keep chasing me. Shoot. Where did I come from? Okay, now we have a long journey back all the way over here. You can do it. You can do it. Across another bridge. You got it. <laughs> Run those fat little legs. Can you make it up here? I think you can. You can. Shoot. Okay, let's go. This is the most precarious pathway I've ever built. No, he's running away. He's running away. Come on. Come on. Chase me. Don't give up now, dude. We're right here. Okay, I think he is scared of the nether portal, so I'm just deactivating this for now. There we go. Oh, maybe. Yes. Yes. Come on. In here in this hallway. Keep coming. Boom. I think we got him. <laughs> okay, there's one down. Shoot. I really hope he doesn't despawn. I fed him a fungus just in case. I just realized bringing the second one is going to be twice as difficult because now there's one already in the chamber we have to avoid okay i made a way to get in through the roof now so this shouldn't be quite as hard now we just gotta go find the second one and pray that this one doesn't despawn while we're gone please there we go all right hoglin number two baby let's get going shoot that's not what i meant to do all right i just gotta find a place to get out and not have the freaking hoglin destroy me where is he? Thank God for my fire protection armor. I'm panicking. Oh, he's trying to get down to me. Um. Okay. Oh, man. I'm panicking. Okay, I'm harvesting a whole bunch of netherrack. I think I can bridge up and over here and he won't come for me. Okay. Oh my gosh, we survived. Oh, no, no. Our hoglin's gonna, gonna get killed. Come on. No, no. Come this way. Come this way. Make sure not to fall off any ledges again. Just good old classic Minecraft, you know? Nothing like bringing a monster home a hundred blocks so you can trap him and farm his meat. <laughs> in the hole, in the hole, in the hole. Let's go. We got him. Seal this back up. And we'll just break through the ceiling here. There we go. Oh my gosh, two hoglins. Our hoglin farm is officially in business. Now I just got to feed you guys. Yes, and there's a baby. <laughs> But well, would you look at that? We've got infinite food production in the nether. With the hoglins in their cage, I just had a few more improvements I wanted to make around the nether base. Like some lights in the hallways. And a little bit of storage in the main area where the portal is. So while I've been tidying up the base and adding some lighting, I've been breeding up these guys so that we can do a full system test with this room. Also, I know this farm is by far not the most efficient farm out there, but it's mine and I had a ton of fun building it. And that's really what it's all about for me. I'd encourage you to take some time to just experiment with random mechanics like hoglin breeding and stuff like that yourself. It's just a great way to keep invested in your world and do things your way. But before we go do a full system test in the base here, we of course have to thank our members and go get the question of the day from the mail. Yeah, I think the upgraded shrine looks so much better up here. I'm glad we took the time to do that. Okay, today we are thanking Pizza Taimu for being a legend, thank you. Felix Sarg for being a villager. Clown Town Brown for being a member. Tomaz E for being a villager. JK Sutton for being a legend, thank you. John T for being a villager. Violet Merrifield for being a legend. Pastel for being a member. I'm assuming it's Pastel just spelled with a four and a three. Can Sack for being a villager, thank you. And Jonathan Moore, thank you for being a legend. This place is almost completely full, and I think we already have enough names to fill in these slots, so we're gonna have to build another shrine somewhere soon okay let's see what we got for the question of the day today this is a good question from spider z5145 asking are you going to use an elytra what well, they trivialize Ooh, i can't talk are you going to use an elytra they trivialize traveling which i dislike that's a really good point spiders at this point i am planning to get an elytra but you know I could never abandon my boy Horse Horse here. I would love to keep developing like a road system around our world as it continues to grow bigger. And I would love to rely primarily on foot traffic. Just because I think it, I don't know, it makes everything feel a little bit more alive. It's just one of those things you can do. There's so many things you can do to like make you feel more like you're a part of your world instead of just like 
a god zooming around in the sky making whatever you want happen you know i think it would be good to have an elytra for like when we build stuff especially if we're building like super tall structures and i don't want to be breaking my legs every time i fall off to go get more materials but i definitely think we will limit our elytra usage at least for a while Anyway, back to the nether base. It's time to finally test out our hoglin cooker. <laughs> so in theory, I should be able to whack it. Oh, they drop leather. Okay, I'm going to have to add a sorting system for sure. But I should be able to whack these guys. And then we press this button. And the minecart picks everything up except for this. <laughs> Oops. Okay, the leather came through first. Oops. There we go. <laughs> Flawless. Of course, it works perfectly without a hitch. <laughs> oh boy, we're definitely going to have to add some sort of sorting system to sort out the leather. I totally forgot that. Hoglins drop leather too. I'm also going to have to adjust this line of half slabs here because I guess things can fall onto it and I really don't want that. But we'll get it figured out. There's lots of tweaking we can do. It gives us a ton of pork too. Look at that. That's going to be great. By the way, I think this place is pretty villager proof. So I think I'm going to move a bunch of you guys into this base. I don't have time for this episode, but I'm thinking maybe we can do a live stream or something sometime where I move like maybe three or four people here because there's so many of you that signed up to be villagers and I got to get you out into the world. And also let me know what other rooms we should add to this base because there's definitely places we can expand off of like this hallway we could put something right here leading to another room there's lots of opportunities here i've never built in the nether this much and i think this would be a super cool opportunity as i was building this i was really trying to avoid it looking too much like dallas meds uh science lab or S science center that he has but there's only so much you can do with white and gray concrete to make it different and also i wouldn't call this so much a lab as it is like a, a base oh my gosh that's crazy you can see the gas out the windows on the roof anyway thank you so much for watching i'm gonna chill here with the hoglins and i'll see you in the next episode